The following podcast is going to contain spoilers along with sugar-enriched flour and partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. Consider yourself warned. Welcome to another episode of the Stephen or Else podcast. I'm your host. My name is Stephen, and I am not at all prepared for this episode. Not at all prepared. See, I should be doing part two of my favorite Avenger story, which is Under Siege from way back in the 80s. We did two of the five issues last week, and I should be doing the other three this week. But here's the thing. There's this thing that sometimes happens when you are making plans, and that thing is called life. And so what that means is due to circumstances that have arisen, I am not prepared to talk about those three issues. Let's do that next week. This week, I'm just going to sit in my car and I'm just going to talk. I have a couple things I want to talk about, and then we'll just see where it goes from there. The first thing I want to do is just give you an update on the old diet. So far, as of, uh, well, just a couple of days ago, I have been, well, <sighs> this is what happens when I don't prepare. I don't have anything ready to say. So just to back up a bit, I started a diet doing the Weight Watchers back at the end of February, and it's been going pretty good. And I actually, I went to my last weigh-in, and I actually expected that I was going to show a gain because the week, the past week, I just didn't, I just, I didn't follow the diet at all. I just didn't care. I spent a week just not caring. And you have to do that every once in a while. Otherwise you're going to go freaking crazy. So I was, I was expecting it. I was prepared mentally to step on the scale and see myself three to four pounds heavier. And in fact, we have an on-site nurse practitioner at my day job. She's not here all the time, but she happened to be here on the same day that we had, that I had my weigh in. And I had an appointment with her that morning. And while I was there, I went ahead and jumped on the scale. And according to it, that scale based on the last time I weighed at, on the scale at the Weight Watchers, meaning I gained four pounds. So I was, eh, yep, that's what I expected. So I get to my meeting that night. I'm getting ready to step up on the scale. And granted, I'm not, I, I, I don't dress the same when I go to weigh in officially. I don't wear, some of those folks come in and they take off their shoes. They strip down the t-shirts and shorts. And I don't, I don't go that right. I don't go crazy like that, but I do change my shoes and my shirt before I go. I take off my I'm either wearing a, you know, it doesn't matter what I wear, but the shoes that I wear are big, clunky. I mean, they're freaking heavy. I bet my shoes are about five pounds altogether. So I do change into some chucks because they're lighter. But I, I get ready to step on the scale and I tell the lady, I said, I'm pretty sure I gained this week, but I'm okay with it. And she goes, well, it's going to happen. And I step up on the scale and it shows that I lost 2.4 pounds. And I said, holy crap. And that, is a total, so far, since the end of February, I have lost 25 pounds. 25 pounds. My dog weighs about 25 pounds. I picked up my dog and said, I have lost you. I'm not carrying that weight around anymore. 25 pounds. I ordered some new pants. The first time I have bought pants that have been a smaller size than what I normally buy. I bought my, so basically I bought my first three pair of smaller pants. And honestly, I just went down one waist size and they might still be too big. I don't know. I haven't gotten them yet. I'm on my last notch on my belt. Now, frankly, when I look at myself in the mirror, I can't, I can't really see it because I've still got, I still got quite a lot of girth. And so for me to look in the mirror after having lost 25 pounds and just really not see it at all, really kind of tells you how how big, how big I am. But at 25 pounds lost, I am about five pounds away from meeting my first personal goal. My, my overarching, my main personal goal is to lose 100 pounds. 
Now, I don't know. They haven't set my goal yet for Weight Watchers. I understand that they set a goal at some point because eventually with a goal being set, once you reach that goal, you become a lifetime member. And as long as you stay no more than two pounds over that goal, if you know if you never go above two pounds over, then your membership is free. You have to go in and weigh once a month. It's a requirement. And as long as you're staying where you're supposed to be staying, your membership is free. So, of course, you know, that's not something folks think about when they start a program like this. They, you know, a lot of, I, th- I, I feel like a lot of folks are like, I'm going to, I'm going to diet for a little while and lose some weight. And really when it comes down to it, you know, when you're going to diet me, for me, I, it's taken me a while to take this step because I knew, I knew before I started it, that this isn't just me trying to lose a little weight. This is a complete and total lifestyle change for me. I know that once I hit that weight that I'm going for, that doesn't mean I'm done. It's like, yay, I hit my weight. I'm done. I don't have to do this anymore. No, I have to continue to do it for the rest of my life if I want to stay where I want to be and not get all fat again, you know? So that's my diet update. Um, Now, I do want to talk real quick about Marvel Comics because I don't know if y'all have seen this whole Marvel number 1000 thing that's coming out in August. It sounds, I guess, well, let me just tell you my feelings about this because my first thought, I told somebody today about it. I said, this Marvel number 1000 thing is stupid. And I want to explain to you why I think it's stupid. I, in, in the end, what it all comes down to is the way that I was processing how this information had been coming to me over the last week. Okay, so sometime early last week, they had started teasing this thing in August. And really all they did were there, you'd see it on the on the, uh, the the comic book sites and on Twitter and on Instagram, just these one-shot images that showed a creative team and then said August 2019. It would either be one creator, you know, someone who is a writer and an artist, or it would be a writer paired with an artist or a pair of writers paired with an artist, whatever. But the only information they gave you is here's a creator, here's a creative team, something's coming in August. And they had stuff coming out like Al Ewing with uh, George Perez, J. Michael Straczynski with Ed McGinnis, Walt Simonson, Eric Larson, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, Alex Ross, Mark Wade and John Cassidy. So I'm seeing this stuff. And all I can think of is, holy crap, Marvel is going to be freaking awesome in August. How are they getting all these people to come do books for them in August? This is freaking crazy. They are starting a freaking comics creation revolution right now. Holy crap. This is a game changer. And then, no, it comes out a couple days later that it's actually just a one-shot comic It's an 80-page comic where all these creators will each have a one-page story. Seriously? Seriously, Marvel? Now, I truly didn't believe that Alex Ross was going to be put on a monthly book. I figured, I see Alex Ross. Okay, he's going to do a new book for Marvel. He's going to do like a freaking six-issue mini or something. But these other folks, Joe Hill, that's uh, Stephen King's son, if you're not aware. I've read some of his stuff. Well, he did Lock and Key, for gosh sakes. Him and Mike Allred on a book? I just, I was freaking out. And then I find out, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to get one page from them. One page. And the whole purpose behind this, this is a stunt. This is a stunt so that Marvel Comics can sell a million copies of an issue. C.B. Sobolski, the editor-in-chief, said, oh, let's, uh, you know what, I think we should, um, I think we should sell a million copies of of, of a comic. I have no idea if C.B. Sobolski sounds that way. I apologize, uh, C.B., but I'm not happy about this. (laughs) I mean, I'm not angry. I'm not going to write a letter. I'm not going to start a freaking petition. I just, I was so excited 
when I read all these creators that were coming to Marvel Comics to just end up learning that, oh no, they're just going to give you one page. Got to sometimes feel like, oh my God, life's so good. Got to sometimes feel like, oh my God, life's so good. Got to sometimes feel like, oh my God, life's so good. Got to sometimes feel like, oh my God, life's so good. I'm on the cover of a lot, a lot of magazines. No, I don't say all, but I've been practicing my big TV grin and charming banter. Interviewers always follow up on the answers. Prancers such as I lift heels up. Get your people here, we'll set some nails up. But don't fuss my pretty little with the chores. I'm critically acclaimed and I've never ignored now. Notice that none of that's true. Front a lot got inauthentic at you. What else is new? What else to do but keep on seeming like a celebration lyric could be anything redeeming. Got the sometimes. I mean, it's like these commercials that you'll see every once in a while that look like it's this new freaking fantastic slam action freaking sci-fi monster fest movie or just this amazing movie and then you find out no that's a car commercial or that's a phone commercial and you just get kind of you feel let down so if one of those you know news sites who like to put out useless headlines were to put out uh podcaster Stephen R. Orr reacts to Marvel Comics number 1000, the reaction would just be, that's stupid. And it's only because I'm very disappointed in the outcome. It's, you know, they they shined, they, they, they hung this flashing, bright, pretty thing in front of me and said, look, look, look what it is. And then when I went to grab it, they said, here, here's a uh, Here's an apple, <laughs> you know, something that it's not bad. They're not giving me a bad thing. They're just not giving me what the hype, what the teases made it sound like. And for me, the, I mean, I don't know that it's so really, it's just put me off on the whole thing and everything I've read about it so far just makes me question what they're, you know. So for example, I, I look at it and I say, oh, so really the whole purpose of this is just to you're, it's the whole stunt casting, as they call it. They're just, we're going to we're gonna do this big thing. We're going to sell a million copies, and then we'll be able to give each other high fives and go, look, we sold a million copies of this. And the reason is because of, you know, they're calling it Marvel Comics number 1,000. It's because, well, it's because of a couple things. So Marvel Comics number one was an issue that debuted in 1939. And so now they're saying, you know, based on all the versions of books that came out, um, because that was it was Marvel Comics number one, and then the title was changed to Marvel Mystery Comics, and then it was changed to Marvel Tales. And you know, it went through a bunch of name changes. There was a bunch of titles that were called Marvel of some sort. And this is their kind of way of saying, if those at all continued on, this would be the number one thousand issue. Even though that's not really the the case. They're they're saying symbolically this would be the number 1,000 issue. But really what they're doing is they're looking over at DC and they're seeing, oh, DC put out Action Comics number 1,000 and made a crap ton of money. And then they put out Detective Comics number 1,000 and they made a crap ton of money. We need to do that. We need to do that. So we're going to do Marvel Comics number 1,000 and we're going to sell a crap ton of money. Because this is in celebration of their 80th anniversary. But in my mind, I'm not, I'm just speaking for myself here, folks. In my mind, they went about it the wrong way. They teased it the wrong way. They got this guy here. They got this fanboy super excited for a bunch of freaking titles that were going to come out in August featuring just these stellar creators and then they pulled the rug out from under me. But hey, I'm not bitter. I mean, yeah, Marvel, you got to make money. I get it. You do you. You go play that game. You make your money. I'm just I'm just really disappointed by how this all how this all came to be. How you announced it. You know? But you know what? That's that's okay. So I've been watching season 14 of Supernatural. It is now on the Netflix. 
I don't know if any of my listeners are fans of the supernatural. I am a huge fan of the show. And when I started the season, I'm about 10 episodes in. I always worry whenever I start a new season of Supernatural because I think to myself, is this going to be the one that really sucks? And the first episode is over and I'm, I'm, you know, that was, that was pretty good. That was, you know, wasn't great. I'm not sure where they're going here, but uh, I guess that's, yeah, that's a pretty good episode. But now I'm like, ha ha, yeah, we're going someplace. They, they are really good about setting up these concepts these these uh the villains the uh the main bad big bad thing that they have to go after they're just really good about getting setting that up and there's just been some really great payoffs there have been some really great moments so far in these first 10 episodes and i'm i'm trying not to think of the fact that there's only going to be one more season and then i will never be able to experience sitting down and watching a brand new season of supernatural again i mean I'm not complaining. 15 seasons is nothing to sneeze at. It's pretty darn good. And I'm really, really, really enjoying the show. Again, I don't know if I have any listeners who enjoy the Supernatural TV show, but I sure as heck really like it. If you're not watching it, if you if you are, if you see it all the time when you're on Netflix, if you're, oh, I guess they put up another new season of Supernatural. I should give that show a try maybe. I don't know. It looks okay. Let me let me just let me give you a little information. In a nutshell, the show is about two brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester, and they hunt monsters. That's it in a nutshell. That's your elevator pitch. They're brothers, they hunt monsters. Their mother died when they were very small and it they she died under supernatural circumstances which caused their father to 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 investigate and become a part of this supernatural world and start hunting monsters and raised these two boys to become hunters and their father disappears and the boys have to go find him and that's how the whole series starts and then after they they find their father, then they're going to go find what they find. But basically, the father has found out what killed their mother, and then they have to go find that and kill it. And then just, man, it just keeps going and going and going from there. And I believe, if I understand correctly, the show was supposed to end after five seasons. If you watch it up to that point, you can see at the end of that season, and I want to say it's five, um, you can see how it does end. And so then when they bring it back for the next season, it almost for a moment feels like, all right, they're really kind of pushing things, but then they made it so good and they just keep making it good season after season. Now it's not one of these shows where, you know, each season, each following season has to be bigger than the, than the previous one. They're really good about some of the seasons, some of the threats. I mean, they have really had some seasons that the threats were just threats that are so big it's 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 hard to imagine and then they've had smaller threats but it's just such a good show and they do a really good job now the first I'll, I'll be honest with you the first three quarters of the first season it's not it doesn't suck but it it doesn't really become the show that it is until about season three season one you watch when I watch okay from my experience, Season one, they do the whole, there's, there's, you know, there's the, the overall story that's going on. They're trying to find their dad, uh, but it's, it's a monster of the week kind of thing. And so for the first half of the season or so, it's like, oh, all right, this is, this show's okay. I mean, it, I kept watching, so that says something, but it wasn't, it hadn't even touched the level that it has, you know, it's, it sits at a very high special place in my heart right now. And it barely, it it barely even had that gleam at that point in season one. And as season one ends and we go into season two, that's where, that's where I start to be hooked enough that I'm like, okay, I'll, I'm going to keep watching this show because I am, I'm now somewhat, I'm, I'm invested. And then, so season two is really good, but then there is a moment in season three, there is one episode called Bad Day at Black Rock. 
that just sealed it for me. It's, it's, it's such a dumb, small little character moment that just endeared me to the characters. And I've been in love with the show ever since. And they're, they're really good about doing these, uh, dark, scary episodes, but they're also really good about doing these light, funny episodes as well. Yo, busy goats like myself favor hillsides. We're so good at going up the mid and still's pride. And it feels right posing on a peak from up here. See into the end of next week. So I speak from observation, brothers. Way over yon. There's an incline that I'd like to picture my song. Got the greenest of the grasses that I ever beheld. With the breeze in our direction, I could tell by the smell that we've never been fed. How this hilltop could feed us. My bigger brothers, I dream of all three of us wandering, yonder, and filling our bellies up. But without us becoming deli cuts in the process. This is the rub, got a stream in between, con club de glove, the only bridge over, infested by troll, hunger in my belly's got me ready, set, go! Look at me, I could be much chubbier, I could eat, you would see much chubbier, me and then I would be much chubbier, much chubbier, much chubbier, look at me, I could be much chubbier, I'm so scrawny, much chubbier, the go behind me is chubbier, he's much chubbier, he's much chubbier. There is an episode, I don't remember what season it is, but there's an episode where they are uh, cast through a door into another dimension. And basically they leave their world, their universe, their dimension, and they come into ours. And they 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 go through this, it's actually a, a window, you know, it's a, a literal window. And when they come out on the other side of the window, they are on the television set for Supernatural. And so they're in our world. The Everybody who works on the show now thinks that that's actually the two actors, um, Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki. I don't know. You know what? Sue me. Um, yes, I could probably go to YouTube and listen to the guy's name and start pronouncing it correctly. But I'm sitting in a car right now and I'm just trying to record an episode of a podcast. But these uh, the bad guys that they're pursuing they came through as well and there's a moment in the episode where Sam and Dean uh run into a couple of these bad guys and they're backstage you know back behind these sets and they're they're fighting one of them and both of them they're just beating the crap out of this guy and the guy he's like a demon right so it's not like they're you know they're they're really just beating the crap out of some poor dude um, he's a demon. So they're really just wailing on him. And the show's director or producer just happens to walk by and stops and looks and sees what in his mind are these two actors that, uh, are just these normal guys are just actors just beating the crap out of some stranger back behind backstage. And it's such a funny moment. And, Man, it's just a great show. It is just, it's always going to have a special place in my heart for a long time. I have fallen in love with these characters. There are there are actual characters on the show that die and really actually die. And you actually, you care about that and you're upset that they're dead. Uh, but at the same time, both Sam and Dean have died and come back multiple times. In fact, there's a moment in season 14 where one of the one of the newer characters dies and then they bring him back and that character is talking to uh one of the other characters Castiel. I'm not going to I'm I'm trying really hard not to spoil stuff, but as I said at the beginning of the episode, this will this episode will contain spoilers. But Castiel's talking to the dude that died and came back and he basically tells him, "Well, you know, you've had uh re- cuz the guy can't sleep." And he's like, well, that's understandable. You've had a rough couple of days, you know, dying and coming back to life. And actually, that's kind of a, you know, (laughs) actually what he says, he says something like, and believe me, I understand. I've done it before. And so have Sam and Dean multiple times. It's actually kind of a rite of passage around here. And that's just the kind of show it is. It is just, it can be really dark and serious and scary and, and dramatic and emotional And then at the same time, there'll be episodes that are just so funny and lighthearted and and just just fun episodes to watch. And they're really good about mixing it up 
uh, throughout a season, you know, with the, with the, the serious, the dark, serious episodes and, and, and the light, funny episodes. The one thing that I've always found funny about the show though, there's this trope where, um, throughout many of the seasons, there's always something going on with one of the brothers. There's something going on with Sam or there's something going on with Dean and, Whatever's going on with them, you know, let's say there's Sam has, uh, and I'm just going to make, Sam's got, um, he's been having weird dreams about the same demon over and over and over. I don't believe that actually happens, but, you know, we'll just use that. And you know that if he would just say something to Dean about it, maybe they could figure it out and, and everything would be okay and they'd fix the problem. But instead he keeps it inside and he won't tell him. And so... They spend a lot of time in this old Chevy Impala that's called Baby because for most of the series, uh, it's only just within the last couple seasons that they have found a home base of operations. But for most of the series, they don't they just travel all over the United States and they stay in hotel rooms and they they um, they con people out of money. They they hustle pool and and stuff like that. That's how they make their money to get by. And um so Sam will be having this issue. He's having this dream, whatever. And so they'll be in the car together and they'll they'll start an episode out and Dean will be like, eh, what's what's wrong with you lately? You've been you just you just you've just been brooding and you won't talk. And Sam's, oh, it's it's nothing. I don't really want to talk about it. It's no big deal. Well, you talk to me, right? If you know we could work this out, we could we could do something about it. No, there's nothing wrong. I'm okay. Well, you're, I feel like there's something you're not telling me. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm fine. And then they go and they beat up the monster for that week. If, you know, and I'm talking about episodes that are not part of the main arc of the season. And so then the end of the episode, um, they'll be driving along and Sam will be like, okay, uh, you know, this fight with this monster made me realize that, that, you know, um, I do need you to help me. And, and here's what's going on. And then Dean will be, well, you, you, this has been going on for, for, for weeks and you didn't tell me. And then, 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 then he's angry at him. And then, so then they spend a couple episodes being angry at each other. They'll start the next episode. I'm so angry at you, Sam. Well, I'm angry at you too, Dean. And then the end of the episode, you know what, Sam, uh, fighting that monster made me realize that, uh, I, I, I shouldn't be angry at you. And of course I'm simplifying it, uh, quite a bit. But that's for a number of seasons there. That's kind of you, you see, just see that happening over and over and over again. And whereas shows like, well, for example, 24, I remember watching 24. And at one point you just get kind of tired of all the obstacles that are thrown in Jack Bauer's way. You know, he's supposed to stop the terrorists and everybody he works with just keep they just keep throwing up roadblocks. And you just want to say, would you just let Jack do what he's supposed to do? But that uh, on Supernatural, it for me, I found it after a while. I didn't get sick of it. I thought it was funny. Uh, here we go again. You know, I just, I found it, I just found it endearing. And it is one of my, probably my top five favorite TV shows of all time. I will be sad to see it go. I'm sure when season 15 hits Netflix, I will be talking about it. I'm going to see what I can do. I'm going to try hard to. I know that there's a CW app where you can watch these shows. I'm going to try really hard to maybe try to keep up with season 15 as it's coming out. That way I can maybe try to talk about it each week. I don't know because it's a big deal. Season 15, the last season, the end of the series. I feel like there's going to be certain things that they're going to bring back that they're going to have to revisit certain characters and whatnot, that if they, if, that if, you know, they're not in the season, I'm going to be really disappointed. And maybe I will plan on trying to put together uh, a supernatural episode before season 15 starts. I don't know. I haven't quite decided. It just, you know, 14 seasons to try to put together in one episode just sounds like a lot of work. If I had been podcasting, and I probably was, man, when that show came out, 15, 14 seasons ago, I probably was podcasting. I just ignored the show for a number of years because it did not look appealing to me at all. And I think that's why I really try to push the show on people because I was one of those folks that just avoided it for a good six, seven years because I just didn't, I didn't like the look of it. There was just something about it. I just didn't like it. I just, I'm not really 
into, I don't know, there was just something about it that just did not appeal to me at all. And so I avoided it and I had to be talked into giving it a try. And I am so glad that I gave it a try because it's it has become, as far as my life in regard to entertainment, it's become a big part of my life when it comes to entertainment. All right, well, I don't really know what else I can talk about on this episode. Again, I, I had like the three topics that I knew I wanted to talk about, my diet, Marvel Comics number 1000, and Supernatural. I can't really think of much anything else. Um, I'm sitting in my car. Like I said, I'm sitting in my car and recording. Uh, I, I do kind of want to talk at some point about what I go through when I'm sitting in my car because I'm out in the parking lot and there's never a good time for me to come out and just try to sit for an hour and record during my lunch break because this is the place I work. People are going to lunch all the time. So there's always cars coming and going, people listening to their rate, you know, their car stereo is up really loud. I've, I've constantly have to, I have to stop and start again and try to remember where I left off. And it's just a real big kind of pain in the butt. It's really turned into, this was something I thought that was going to be super easy to do. I just sit in my car and talk and it's turned out to be a huge, I don't want to, I'm not trying to be negative about the show because I am going to start, uh, just in a couple of weeks, we, I'm going to go down to our local library. There's actually a recording studio set up in our local library that has a card holder I can use for free. I have to book time and there's like uh, the main room where actual bands can come in and record. And then there's a smaller room that has two microphones and I can, I can book it for four hours at a time. And I've booked it for two days in May. And so I'm going to go in and give it a try and see what kind of show I can put together. Uh, you know, try to do multiple episodes at the same time. And I, you know, it's, I'm really looking forward to giving that a try out. I think the ep- I think the show is going to be much better doing that because I really do. I've gotten to the point now where it's I just really stress out when I think about having to record an episode because I know that a 45 minute long episode is going to take me an hour and a half because I have to keep starting and stopping. And if I ever if I ever wanted to put an R rated version of my episode out. I could just, all I have to do is just add in all the bloopers at the end of all the times that I am getting angry because somebody decides that they're going to come out, you know, and it's, it's funny because I blame them and it's not their fault. It's their parking lot too. They want to come out and sit in their car with their windows down, listening to their radio and smoking a cigarette during their lunch break. You know what? (laughs) It's who am I to say that they can't do that? But because it infringes upon my ability to record an episode, I get really angry and I tend to, uh, I mean, I don't obviously don't cuss them out while they're sitting there, but you know, I tend to, uh, cuss a bit to myself and oftentimes get it on record, but, uh, I've, I always end up deleting all that stuff. But anyway, that's my episode. I want to thank you for listening to it. I'm going to try to do the closing here without any, uh, show notes at all. No, I'm not going to try to do this without notes. I've got notes. I might as well put them together because anytime I've tried to do the ending without notes, it just turns into a big pile of crap. All right. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to the Stephen or else podcast. You can email your questions and comments to Stephen or else at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment to the episode on the site. That's Stephen or else.com. You can follow me on both Twitter and Instagram by searching for at Stephen or else. I also invite you to join me over at the Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Stephen or else. You can join my Patreon and for as little as a dollar a month, be a supporter of the show. You also have access to the exclusive My Other Podcast podcast, which goes out every week, usually twice, and with rare exception is only available to my patrons. So you can do that over at patreon.com slash Stephen R. Or. And there are multiple tiers, but you get my other podcast right away at a dollar a month. So that's really all I need. The Stephen or else podcast is a proud member of the comics podcast network. You can find it over at comicspodcast.com. The theme song for this episode is worship by Trinity X. Find it and more music by the band at atomic zombie 
www.mcfrontalot.com. The rest of the music comes from MC Frontalot. Find him at frontalot.com. And of course, all those links will be in the show notes. So until next week, I'm Steven, and this has been my podcast. Be nice to each other. Good job.